yes. You are correct to woo as such, my friend. Hello, world. What is up? Welcome to Build. I'm your host, Matt Forte. We are here live at the Build Studio in New York City. Our next guest is a phenomenally talented actor and host. You've seen him everywhere. Uh, some of your favorite shows, some of your favorite movies. He's currently on Broadway. Uh, season two of his hilarious procedural Carter kicks off tonight on WGN America. Uh, here to tell us all about what he's been up to and generally be a really awesome presence. Please welcome the great Jerry O'Connell is here, everybody. Come on, make some noise. Jerry, yes. What's up, everybody? Jerry O'Connell is here. Oh, excuse uh, me. He's, excuse me. Actually, he's there. Oh, Jerry O'Connell is there. He's in the audience. Whoa, whoa, whoa. sorry about Jerry. that. Jerry, what's up? Welcome. There Thank you are. Thank you. Oh, my God. I was concerned. Hey, they, everybody. They said you were going to make it. I, I knew you'd be here. I did not expect to find you there. I got to tell you, these AOL build couches, very comfortable. Well, you can only find them here. It's the only place. They're all handmade. Ca That's not true. We What's didn't up, everybody? How are you? I'm, do I'm well. How are you guys doing? You guys doing well? They seem to be very well. How about Quick yourself? Quick question yes. for you, Matthew. Go for it. Just give me your Gerald. foot here for a second. You want the, right the do you left. always go sockless? Uh, not always. Are there little baby socks under there? No, with a van, Let though. Let me feel. I will, get there are no baby socks under There's there. There's not. I will tell you this. I was wearing another shoe with a sock prior to this. Okay. I don't recommend that. Do we? Are we concerned about... I don't want to gross everyone out here on the AOL Build Series, We're but not. are we concerned about smell when you take them off I'm without socks? Here's what I'm going to be on. No, hang on. Hang on, these are great questions, and I'm getting very comfortable. I hope you don't mind. Okay, I, okay. Um, put up the other one as well. Come yeah, on. if I'm going to go for both, I'm just going to... So here's here's the deal. I'm not, in this scenario, and I'll tell you why, I, I don't wear these all day. I put them on sockless now, we'll talk, then they come right off. Okay, okay, it's yeah. good to know. It's yeah. good to know how you guys do it here. You can, Well, anything in moderation, really. Because they do make those like little, like... I've seen those. Booty, 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 booty socks. Yes, you know? the, the, the little elastic, they hug right, right. below the ball of the foot. What is the name of that? What is that? I, I, I call them booty socks. You call them booty socks? Yeah. That's an interesting thing to call them. <laughs> we're going to, well, I was going to talk about your show, but I think we're about to go down a 20 minute rabbit hole in booty socks, buddy, because <laughs> we I have made such a long time. I love coming here. I love your interviews. They're great. I mean, I guess it's what we call long form interviews these days. If you work in television or do these shows, it's so. The time is so limited because there's usually a commercial break, so you literally have like three minutes to like get to your it's the point. Beauty, the beauty of this show and the internet, it's the Wild West. We can just talk. Right. If we anything. were on television, I could have never asked you, what is your sock? The producers would have been flipping out. Move on from the socks. <laughs> get away from the... Enough socks. <laughs> Not here. No, we could do it all day. To, to our own detriment, I suppose. <laughs> That's the downside to having complete freedom. We could just talk about socks. But we're not going to. We're going to come back to them. But we're going to talk about some other things. Uh, primarily, you've got so much going on right now. I'm super excited to talk about this. But you've got a, a huge show on Broadway. That's I'm on a show. Well. I'm in a show, a great show called Soldier's Play. Um, it's uh, a Pulitzer Prize winning play. It was originally on, um, it was originally off Broadway uh, here in New York. Uh, starred a few um, uh Actors, you probably won't recognize their names, Sam Jackson and Denzel Washington. Never heard of them. And uh, it's just a, such a powerful play about race relations in the U.S. Army in the early 1940s. And this is the first time it's been on Broadway. So it's literally been like 40 years in the making. And it's, um, it, it's a really special play. I mean, I hope everybody comes to see it. We open tomorrow. Um... So it's sort of an exciting time because the reviews come out and in the theater world, that's like a big deal, you know? I mean, like, it's it's so funny with like TV and stuff. Uh, I'm also in Carter on WGN America tonight. Premiering tonight. But um, tonight. like with reviews, like I, you don't really care about them. I mean, occasionally I'll go through Twitter and just see what people are saying, you know, like he looks so old. Um <laughs> <laughs> um, the, Why do you color your hair? I'm, I'm so sorry I tweeted that. I should have kept that to myself. <laughs> I I knew it was going to come up. Oh, oh this I, is the best one. It's chill on the Botox, man. Chill. <laughs> um, but, um, you know, I, I normally don't care about them. Right. I mean, I do care about them, but I don't act like I care about them. But in the theater world, it's like, uh, it's a big deal, you know? Yeah. I was in a... Broadway show a few years ago um, that did not get a favorable review and it closed immediately. Immediately? Immediately. Whoa. 
And it was, it's pretty crazy. Like you come to work. I mean, it's like, I mean, I, I, I mean, I guess the equivalent would be like you work at a restaurant, it gets a bad Yelp review. And then the manager brings everybody in and goes, Hey everybody. So we're closing on Wednesday. Um, this is it. Clear out your lockers. And so, um, it is a little nerve wracking, you know, but the play is great. Soldiers play roundabout wow. theater, American airlines theater right there on 42nd. It's so fun being on Broadway. Well, that's the thing. I was doing. I was looking into the history a little bit. You've done. You've been on Broadway three. This is your third time on right. Broadway, correct? Yeah. And and so I was seeing the different shows you've done, and I was very curious because you every time you come through here, you've got so many cool things going on, and, and you have so many irons in the fire. And I was wondering what uh, about Broadway? What does it take for you to say, all right, I'm going to dedicate time and do this with the uh, all the things I got going on. I really want to be a part of this. What What are the eleven herbs and spices that you see and you go, yeah, that's something I got to do. You know what? It's some. Um Broadway's really challenging. Uh, theater's really challenging. Um, it's challenging. It's scary. And you're supposed to do things that really scare you, you know? And um, it's it's like borderline nerve-wracking doing Broadway, you know? I, get, I still get very nervous right before this play starts. Um, Soldier's Play is a very char- racially charged play. So it's just nervous even saying it. You want to make sure that you're serving uh, this Pulitzer Prize winning play to the best of your ability. It's um, You're supposed to do things that take you out of your comfort zone. I mean, doing Carter, WGN America, Monday nights, everybody! Season two, there we go. Um. I'm pretty comfortable there. <laughs> this feels like your comfort zone. This it's show. not, yeah. it doesn't make me uncomfortable. No. Soldier's play makes me uncomfortable yeah. and you're supposed to do stuff like that. You know, you, 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 you do feel like once you've accomplished something that scared you, um, you, you feel a sense of accomplishment. Like you really did something. There's growth there. You've, you've overcome a fear. You, you've, you've, you can, one of the few times in life, you can feel growth as a person. You feel different on the other side of it than you did. What was the last time you did something that scared you? (sighs) That's a great question. The last time I did something that scared me. See, I immediately go to like superficial things like uh, paragliding or something like that. I'm terrified of heights. And my Did wife, you really go gl- uh, paragliding? What, not paragliding. What's the one where they drag you from a boat and you go a couple oh, hundred oh, feet uh, in the air? Parasailing. Parasa- I got the para right. right. It was the second half that I that I miffed there. But um, but I did that. That scared the bejesus out of me. Did you do it at like a resort? I did. My my wife and I we were on a cruise and she convinced me to do it. I was never in a million years I never would have done it. Did you do it together, Tandem? Yes. Oh wow! And there's a wonderful video that she took of me uh, <laughs> questioning all of my life decisions <laughs> and wondering how we'll ever make it out of this life. This is a true. Uh, I know this is your time, but I'm gonna tell you a story real quick. Oh, this I is love what this happened. Stuff. We get in the boat, right? And like we're gonna send you up there. And when they, if anyone that's ever parasailed before, they ask you if, when you come back down if they want to like dip you in the water. This is a fun little trick they can do. And they go dip your feet, right? So as we're Wait, hold on a second. In the parasailing world, we call that kissing kissing the water. I, that's I'm what he kidding. Said. I know I'm no, making this up. So, he no, he didn't say that, Jerry. So, so Bro, they, you want to kiss the water on your way down? So, uh, so Parasailing talk. So they set that up, then they're strapping you in, clip, 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 clap, they strap you in. And for whatever reason, he's playing, uh, he's got music blaring, a wind is blowing, he's like, we're getting ready to go, and he asks us before, just your feet. J-U-S-T, just your feet. Like, do you want us to dip your feet? I thought he said, adjust your feet, which I'm like, how do I adjust my feet? And he's like, and we're gone, and then we're up in the air. So for the entire time, I thought I didn't adjust my feet properly, and I was You're gonna fall. terrified for a solid 10 minutes that my non-adjusted feet would be my demise. That's the last time I did something I was scared of. That's really funny. <laughs> By the way, you're really high up there when you parasail, aren't you? You are quite up there. They yeah. really throw you up there. They, I, if I had to guess, uh, 15,000 feet. No, that's what it, <laughs> it feels like that. It's like, that's what it feels like in the moment. Um, did you feel safe at all? Cause you're in a parachute that worst case scenario, you're going to come down kind of softly. No, the, uh, the thought process was if we get detached, we're just going to float forever. This is my life. Now I will be one with the birds. I'm really proud that you did that. You see, you grew as a person when you parasailed at that sandals resort with your, uh, that's how with you your sig- a significant they, other. They push you to do things that you'd be uncomfortable doing otherwise with parasails <laughs> primarily. So this is so this is you got the best of both worlds. You have something that you love that you're very comfortable and enjoying and having a ton of fun. You got another project that's really scary and pushing you out of your comfort zone. That's fantastic. Yeah. It um it is embarrassment of riches. Uh you know it's um 
it's it's just fun to be on Broadway also. You get to it's just it's just such a fun group. I I, I also as an actor I, like I, there's always insecurities when you're an actor like am I good enough? Am I a good enough actor? And when you're on Broadway like it's about as legit as it gets, you know? I mean it can't really get any more legit than being on Broadway. So, I mean, I feel like I could walk up to Sir Ian McKellen right now and be like, hey, man, what's up? Ian, Sir, Sir Ian. <laughs> Jerry O, Soldier's Play on Broadway. What's up, Broadway? Broadway peeps. What's up, man? That is the way to greet Sir Ian McKellen, sure, by the way. everybody knows that. He loves when you get real bro with him. Sure, 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 sure. That's where he... Sure. It. Yeah. Meryl! <laughs> Jerry O! Yeah. Soldier's Play... But I feel like and I'm I'm not just blowing smoke. I think you could have done that prior to Soldiers Play. I feel um, like you've paid your dues and you've done a lot of great stuff. I do know Sir Ian McKellen primarily because my wife, my real life wife, um, was Mystique, and he was her Magneto. That's right. So have I been like to an, a birthday I, party or something. Have you like at that level? Have you? I have been to Magneto's house. Yes. 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 Tell me about that. I mean, I'm totally embarrassing there. I like hold up forks and I go, hey man, make a move. <laughs> My man. Sir Ian, get it? Magneto? Where's your helmet? Ah! <laughs> That's my man. She's just constantly apologizing for it. Totally. You. Yes. Just, I'm sorry, Ian. He's yes. just very excited to be here. And um, and then, you know, when I meet like Sir Patrick Stewart, I'm like all the sirs, all the knights. Professor X, my man. Bro, you're <laughs> Constantly. It's uh, I'm totally embarrassing. Yeah. Well, uh, I married my wife primarily because she's part of that X Men family. I'm still fanning out about that. It's in the vows, yeah, from what I understand. I, uh, every time I see her, I'm holding up comics or like little those little uh, figurines and asking her to autograph them. I know that about you. That's true. You had some in your bag when you came here. Oh, totally. Yeah. Uh, season two. I'm going to bring it back to the show. Oh, yes. Carter. Yes. WGN America. Two. Season two is always great for a show. One, because it's great to get a second season in anything. But also, the writers, they start writing for the actors. They start knowing the parts a little bit. There's more comfort. There's more confidence. Everybody's having fun. What was season let two me, like for let you? Let me break down Carter for everyone, because they're just looking at this heavily airbrushed photo of me and being like, what is this show about? As you can see, there's like a sort of rural background happening here in this photo. And then here are my sunglasses. You see palm trees and like Hollywood lights and stuff. So let me just break down what our amazing marketing team who added a significant amount of hair to me here. And dark. It's quite it. a quaff. Yeah. Took out this wrinkle right there. <laughs> um, I play an actor on television who is a detective. Think of David Caruso in CSI Miami, who famously played Horatio, not Sands, he's on SNL, I love him. Yeah. Horatio. I can't remember his last name either. Horatio. Somebody got it? No. No. They all know who we're um, talking about though. But he played the guy on CSI Miami who talked like this and would say things like, smells like murder. <laughs> and then like take his sungla uh, sunglasses off, you know? <laughs> Yeah, and then, and then the music would start. So I play that guy, and I move to this small town called Bishop. It's a fictitious town, and I go in and tell the police, listen, I've been on a TV show for a very long time where I played a cop. I know how to solve crimes, and you don't. <laughs> I'm the specialist here. And it's really funny because, like, I'll say, like, I'll be telling Sydney Poitier, you saw her in the trailer, that's Sydney Poitier's daughter, a beautiful girl, amazing actress, so funny. She plays the real cop on TV, and she's like, you know, I'll run in and be like, look, we're getting close to act three of this story. I'm telling you, I know you think it's going to be this person. There's going to be a twist. There's always a twist. I'm telling you. And she'll be like, look, this is real life. Life isn't like television. You know, get your head out of your butt. Like, let's be real here. A murder was a, a murder occurred. And then, of course, I'll be right. And I'll be like, I told you that's what happens. And it's um. It's a really cute, fun show. We really have a fun time doing it. And I, for you specifically, I feel like this is a slippery slope because I'm watching you playing this and I'm like, oh, crap. I bet you Jerry, doing enough of this, thinks he could be a detective. Do I, you ever find yourself you know, getting into that? Here's no? the only crazy thing about Carter when I read it. Um, it's written by a guy named Gary, uh, Gary Campbell, who's hilarious, who wrote on a show called Kids in the Hall, if you remember a sketch show back in the day. Very funny. Very funny person. Um, 
I, I, I played a cop on another what they call a procedural show. So procedural, we all know what that is. Law and Order, CSI. Yeah. Um, you know, um, uh, they're procedural shows. Something happens in the beginning, you know, they're a crime, and then, you know, there's the a Dick murder. Wolf the Dick Wolf universe. The Dick Wolf universe. I was in a procedural called Crossing Jordan for NBC. And while it's a great gig, you know, we did over 100 episodes of that show. You do sort of get, I was never bored. I'm very grateful for every job, but you're like, oh, man, like, like every scene, you're just like sitting in front of a computer, and then you look at your co-star and go, we have a match. And then you like run out of the room and there's usually a chase scene, depending on how much money is in the budget that far in the season. It'll either be in a car or on foot. <laughs> it might only be like a six foot chase scene. It might be like through the city streets. It's like I, I've been there, done that. And I read this script and it really it really made me laugh that it it. It's it is a procedural. There's always a body at the beginning of the episode, you know, blah blah blah. But we make fun of all procedurals as we. That's the fun of the show, it. especially if you're a fan of those other types of shows. And we've all watched a television before, so we know what you guys are referencing. We know what you're talking about. You, you don't need to know the shows by name to see that formula and watch you guys play with those tropes. I have seen every episode of. You're not going to believe this. I've seen every episode of Law and Order. Not true. I'm telling you. There's no way. I'm going to tell you why. My parents are huge Law & Order fans. I'm sure... How many people's parents love Law & Order? Yes. That is a, that All right, only two easy. people raised their hand, but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> My parents love Law & Order so much, I, I'm, I stay at their house here when I'm in New York. I live in Los Angeles. I live in Calabasas, home of the Kardashians. That's where I am with my wife and kids. When I come here to New York, I stay at my mommy and daddy's apartment just a few blocks from here. They have a DVR. I go on their DVR. Not only do my parents watch Law & Order all day long, which is on every channel all the time. I mean, there should be a channel called Law & Order. Yeah. My parents DVR episodes, every episode of Law & Order. There's hundreds of episodes of Law & Order on my parents' DVR. And I always say to them, Mom and Dad, you don't have to record this show. It's on yeah. all the time. It's always there. It's just there. Just do they deviate? Do they SVU? Do they criminal intent? Do they do they go b b beyond the original? I think they like a little old school. My mom they is keep a big it, yeah, Jerry original. Orr back yeah. then. God rest his soul. Mm. Um, but um, so I've watched every episode, and it really makes me laugh because it's as if one of those characters became a detective in a small town and said, this is how TV detectives solve crimes. I, I love it. I have such fun with, with Carter. Uh, no, On WGN America, what night, everybody? Monday nights. Monday. Someone said Sunday. You're wrong. But that's okay. It's Monday. <laughs> that's, why that's why we're here, though. It's okay to be wrong. We're here to get it right. Right, right, um, right. Tonight, Monday nights. Uh, what was I going to ask you? Uh, executive producer on this as well, right? Not just a star? I got to tell you, I don't really do anything as a producer. You don't do anything? Okay. When you get old like me, they start to give you that title. Yeah. Um, it's so funny. I'm a terrible boss. I don't tell anyone what... I can't tell anyone what to do. I'd never be able to fire anyone. People can do whatever they want at work, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, I'm just there to have a good time. It's something they give you when you're... When you get to be my age. Got it. I um, assumed it was either going to be that, or my assumption was having the experience that you have, that you would have ideas of, like, what tropes to overturn, or... I wish I could tell you that. My job is to show up looking pretty to know my lines, and to just get it done. Um, no, um, it, uh, they, they just gave me the title. I mean, I don't even yeah. think they pay me for it. They just put it in the title. I think my I, age, it's like an agent thing. Okay. Hey, I got, you, uh, I got you an executive producer credit. Cool. Yeah. Oh, no. Dude, does that mean I have to like get there earlier? They're like, no, you don't have to do anything. No. We're just going to okay. add another little number to that box on IMDb. What do I have to do for that? <laughs> like, if it requires like reading a pat. No thanks. Pass. Okay? Kyra's like, Fine. what's the word? Um, work. Yeah. <laughs> Pass. Not for you. Not your thing. Speaking of people showing up I know pretty. that's not what most actors say, and I should say, like, it's let me Let me change this whole answer. I'm so sorry, everybody. No, you want to go back and do and it? Yeah, over? and just, like, edit, it, edit that yeah, part out I mean, that I just We're did. live, but we can do it again. Go. Yeah. Yeah, just I didn't just, realize just, that. Just, no, just do it again. Just do it again. Just do it again. We'll just do it again. We'll just... <laughs> All right. We'll do it. We'll do it live. Yeah. Um... <laughs> Uh, You're executive producer on this. It's so exciting to amazing. executive produce. It's so fun for me yeah. to be able to impart 
my wisdom that I've accumulated over the years as an actor yeah. Yeah. to the younger people that I work with, it's fun. I wouldn't say I'm a boss right. per se. I'm more of a mentor. How would you categorize your leadership style on set? My leadership style goes something like this. All right. Or you can edit this part out. Um, Jerry, we're, again, we are guys, live. Guys, <laughs> we're almost out of here. Where are we partying tonight? <laughs> okay. The after party. Let's get out of here. Where's Where are the after party at? Uh, we're going to go to some audience questions in a second. Oh, cool. There. Yeah. Uh, but there, there's somebody, we saw a little bit uh, of it. If you go and watch the trailer, you can see there's a little bit of David uh, Arquette shows up. And he's oh, man. Fant he's been on the show a couple of times. one of the greatest guests. What was he like? So Arquette is so fun. David Arquette, a famous actor. Everyone knows who he is. Um, so my character... Uh, plays a guy who was in a TV show for many years who played a cop who moves to this small town and now helps the police solve crime. He has a detective agency. And my show, since I've left the show, my character's been recast with the actual David Arquette. And then he comes to this small town because he's going to shadow me as a detective to use as uh, sort of a storyline for his show. And I become very jealous of him and his fame and all that stuff. And it was really... Funny. First of all, I knew David Arquette because 100 years ago we were in a little film called Scream 2. Yeah. And David Arquette, who you know has been here, is really funny, is just... I, I, I was a very young man when I was in Scream 2, and I, I had worked some, but I had never really worked as an actor. And so I thought the job entailed memorize your lines, hit your marks, know what you're doing, do it the same way every time, give them consistency and I'll never forget I was in a scene with David Arquette who played detective who played De Deputy Dewey I think that was his character's name right Dewey Dewey thank you um, and I, I, something serious was happening in the scene I mean someone had been murdered it was Scream 2 you know or something like that and you know when when you do a shot they all do close-ups of each character, and so you each get your shot of how you react to that scene. And so I was like a young, serious actor at the time. So, like, say action. Like, this is what I did. Ready? Like, say action. And this and is what I did when they were questioning about, like, the murder or something. And action. <laughs> oh, this is a popular one when you're like a young actor. This one. Watch, watch. Clenching the cheeks. Um, so then I did that, and I was like, all right, somebody's going to win a People's Choice Award. And then it came, they were like, okay, it's David Arquette's close-up. And they went to him, and he was Detective Dewey, or, or Sergeant Dewey. And he did the same exact scene, but he was like, <laughs> and I was like, I was, and he gave them everything, and I was mesmerized and there was no we're going to get back to it guys there was no fear in his performance i mean the reason why i was making those faces and everything is i was too afraid to make a fool of myself right. to go a step farther to to go for it and he just went for it and i have to say it changed how i uh, was on a set from that day on, like I was, like I was, like, well, if he's not afraid, I'm not going to be afraid anytime they roll the camera. And I really, um, I, I hold him in the highest regard. So when I called him to come up and do the show, I could, I mean, I, like I, I thought for sure he was going to say, ah, I can't, I'm too busy. He was like, I'll, I'll be right there. He's a true friend. He really is. He was so funny in it. Very, very cool. Very exciting. I'm um, sorry that story took 20 minutes to tell everybody. No, I, just I liked thought it. it. Was kind of There's important. just enough time to go back to the socks and no shoes soon. Yeah. That kind of thing. We're going to start. Oh, we're not done with the parasail no, either, buddy. <laughs> uh, you know, before we get to any of I that. I wish we had video of you up there. <laughs> we're going to die. That video exists. You'll never see it. Let's go ahead. Um, we've got some questions uh, from our audience. First one's come from the internet. This is from... Oh, it's from at Mr. Jerry O.C. Oh. Uh, you tweeted yourself a question, question Jerry. Well Jerry. done. <laughs> Tell us how you stay so muscular. Jerry. First of all, this is so great. I just want to congratulate myself on the little blue check mark. <laughs> Boom. Is that recent? Is that <laughs> it was so difficult to get that blue check mark. 
Uh, by the way, I paid so many. Like, I kept getting scammed. People kept DMing me saying, oh, I can get you verified. Just send me $200 for it. through Venmo. And then I'd realize it was, like, not legit. And that money's gone forever. <laughs> but finally... Um, but not in vain. It was all part of the journey that led to your blue check mark. First of all, you'll notice my profile pic is Prince. That it is. Rest in peace. Love him. I'm a huge fan. So let's look at this question. Question for Jerry. Yeah, let's break it down. Tell us how you stay so muscular. So muscular. <laughs> Not just muscular. Such a great question. So muscular. It's so funny you asked that. Um, Jerry, um, I incorporate a lot of protein in my diet. Uh, I'm kidding. I, uh, I have a gym membership. I never go to it. And when I do go, I usually sit on a ball and watch television. What do you watch? Uh, whatever's on the TV no. there. <laughs> I mean, no anything. Reference. Reality Whatever's television. Yeah, I know you're... Um, uh, I was kidding. I wrote this to myself. It was funnier when I wrote it. I guess... I kind of enjoyed it. I, that was a nice surprise for me. Thank <laughs> you for that. I appreciate that one. I got four in the room. Four questions from people that are not you. Uh, and the first one, you have a microphone. You're pointing all the way over here. There you are, sir. How are you? Hi. My name is Peter Levin... Um, you know what? I'm going to come over here. Go for it. I'll wait here. I'm going to come over here, and we're going to say this. What's your question? My name is Peter Lemoncello from HR. Peter <laughs> Lemoncello, that is a character I played in Carter. You're a huge fan. Yes, I am. My character goes undercover in an insurance company, company. and he makes believe he is Peter Lemoncello <laughs> from Human Resources. Yes. <laughs> and it's my character, because he's an actor and never had a real job, is so excited to work in an office. Yes. That's so, hilarious. Uh, You're my, a huge Carter fan. Yes, I am. So my question is, I've seen this season, and... I know that you do a lot of different characters. You go, um, you go as different people, the uh, pizza man and different sure. characters. What is your favorite character? Is it the, um, your first client's wife or your first client? Who is my favorite character from the season? Colin Mockery is in our episode tonight on WGN America. You all watch Whose Line Is It Anyway? Everybody okay. watches that amazing show. He's an amazing improvist. Um, his wife goes missing in the episode, and he hires me as a detective to find his wife. So in order to find his wife, because I'm an actor who's a detective, I tell him I have to get into character, and I become his wife, and I, I sleep with him, and I'm intimate with him, and I dress in her clothes. <laughs> but then I have to go undercover as him, and it was really fun to dress up as Colin Mockery in front of Colin Mockery, and they got me like makeup and stuff, and it was really, it was really fun. I thought you were gonna say his wife. It, it was fun also playing his wife as well. By the way, fun fact, Colin Mockery's actual wife played his wife in Carter as well. It was really fun. Oh, that is a it, fun fact. Oh, man. They are so funny together. Uh, by the way, Colin Mockery, whose line it is, is it anyway, the funniest guy in the world. His wife is the funniest woman in the world. The two of them in the same scene together was crazy oh god she i, I mean this is um, i'll try and make this story quick but she i want the longest the version possible of this story <laughs> she had it. one of the funniest ad libs i've ever been a part of um there's a line a spoiler alert in tonight's episode where uh, you know to get into character to find her i may believe i was his wife and um i i get into bed with him and then uh, spoiler alert something happens where i t admit to her listen i I slept with your husband, right? And she just ad-libbed, that's okay. That's okay. And it just made me laugh so hard. It's okay. It's okay. It really made me laugh. That's it. Okay. Jerry, I think you could have made that story longer. I think you could have <laughs> no, given I me more. It short. We got a couple more questions. The next one, gentlemen, right here. Hey, how's it going? What's going on, uh, man? <laughs> Look at this. Big fan of yours since uh, My Secret Identity. My Secret Identity, for those who don't remember, uh, those no one will know. You're too young for that show. Um... I played a kid with superpowers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, one of the original uh, quote unquote Marvel heroes. You are correct. Yeah. Yes. And uh, follow you since Sliders as well. So that was, that was my favorite. A science show fiction show I did. Exactly. Well, you know everything. And You're like. Uh, I watch a lot of television. I, I mean, l let's tell them. This is my cousin, yeah. everybody. <laughs> <laughs> it's a plant. It's what we call a plant, a plant. here at AOL Build. <laughs> this is so I've been, good to see you, cousin. You're welcome. <laughs> So, which genre do you prefer working in? Like, you've done sci-fi, comedy, superhero. What, which one do you prefer doing? Um, sci-fi is the most fun because whenever I go to a con, um, and I've been going to them because my wife is in those Star Trek things, and then my wife has to work usually, and I just walk around the floor and stuff, um, people are the most excited. Like, it's so fun. I've never thrown out more high fives than when I go to, like, 
NYCC or uh, San D SDCC or LACC. It's just, um, it's the most fun, you know? And will we get a reboot of uh, Sliders? You know what? A phone call has been made about it. Oh, awesome. Mr. Reese Davies, who was my co-star, called me about it. But um, no one will call me back about it. <laughs> well, we'll put they it in the universe. We're going to get that <laughs> call back. They owe me a phone call. Awesome. Uh, Thanks, dude. Yeah, Jerry, don't go far, because your next question is right over here. What's up? Hey. Come on, hugs. There we nice go. to meet you. you um, well? Yeah, so I had a question. I've really liked when you have um, done your hosting things for like Wendy Williams and right. the Jerry O Show. Sure. I was wondering if there are any opportunities like that coming up for you or any hosting things or no. like that. No, oh. um, nothing. Um, I did this summer. I filled in for Wendy Williams. Yeah. Uh, I came here to talk about it. It was so fun. It's amazing. But um, I don't think anything in the future. I, uh, I, I have to tell you, I mean, like at home... I host a show just for my, when my kids go to school, we have like two cats and a bunch of dogs and I like, yeah. <laughs> I make believe it's like a talk show there and I host it with the, my cats and my dogs. That's nice. But that's pretty. What's the name of that show? <laughs> that show is called Jerry O Talks to His Cats and Dogs. Jerry O wow. Talks. That was, uh, see, this is a bit that I'm working on right now, and it's obviously not working, so I'm not going to talk <laughs> about it anymore. Workshop. But you have, to be, you have to be willing to fail. That, yeah. And that one failed. You got to take risks. Go for it. Go do, for do, it. Uh, give, me a, give me a 180. Give me a 180 for your next question. Boom. Uh, what's there we up? go. Come on, let's sit on one of these comfy AOL couches. Come oh, on. I got you, man. Look at this. My name is Elijah Goring. What's up, Elijah? How, How are you? I'm great. Um, I want to say, if they watch, if um, my sisters and my mom... If you're watching this, I'm with Jerry O'Connor. Yeah. And Will Packer, the producer of Girl Trip, congrats. Um, I'm with, I'm with um, Jerry Connor as well. Sure. And my question to you, Jerry, um, what is it like working with Will Packer? Oh, Isabel, yeah. But um, Beyonce knows. And so I obsessed. was in a film called Obsessed, um, starring Idris Alba, mm -hmm. Beyonce. Good movie. Um, Ali Larder. Um, it was... I mean, first of all, it's exciting to work with Beyonce. I mean, that was, man, it's really tough to be cool around Beyonce. No doubt. No doubt. <laughs> because when you're an actor, it's so funny being an actor. You, I, I guess you, with anything, but like specifically like actor, like you got to be cool, man. You know, you got to be like, hey, wh what, what's up? Like when you come into work, you can't act like a fan. You can't be like, <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Beyonce, I, I only wear Ivy Park. Oh my God. <laughs> you can't say that to a coworker. You have to be like, hey, morning. Yeah, this will be fun. This will be cool. Okay. Wow. Yeah. So it's crazy to like just talking to Beyonce, like, just going to, like, the coffee cart or, like, the food table and just being like, hey, so, uh, how was your weekend, Beyonce? <laughs> hey, what's up? Traffic is crazy today, huh? Yeah, yeah. It's bananas. Uh, you did, you, did you engage in small talk with Beyonce? Yes, I did. Was it about traffic? Um, and did she go, what's traffic? <laughs> what was my... <laughs> and then float off away, oh, just, like, amazing and angelic? Um, you know, um, Beyonce is just, she's the, the sweet, she's the sweetest. Yeah. The sweetest. She's a, she's just such a sweet, I mean, first of all, obviously I don't judge people physically, but if I did, her, her. <laughs> Great way to open a sentence. <laughs> what the hell are you about? Her to beauty is, oh her beauty is staggering. Like when you see her, you're like, it's, it's staggering. It's off-putting. But I think I was just trying to be cool, you know? I was just trying to be cool. Oh, man, I finally, I did. After working with Idris, I had to be like, you know, I was cool, I was cool, I was cool, I was cool. After about a month of working with him on Obsessed, I was like, hey, man, I just got to tell you, I've, I'm have i in The Wire. Yeah. Dude, <laughs> that show was everything. And he was, was so cool. He was like, hey, my, you know, he's English. He's like, uh, I might, you could uh, ask me whatever you want. I'm like, you know, just go ahead and ask me. And so, I like, he allowed me to... Ask him questions. I mean, I only asked for like four hours, but um, gentleman's four hours. <laughs> it was really exciting. It was an exciting. I had never. I, uh, those are some of the biggest stars I've ever worked with. Very cool. Thank you so much for all your questions, Jerry. If I could invite you back up to stage. Yeah!
Well done. Um, you guys, you are an awesome audience. Thank you so much for being here and hanging out with us and having so much fun today. Uh, thanks to those who are watching at home. Uh, and I'm sure a bunch of you tweeted questions, but so did Jerry. So that's the one we asked. Um, that's on us. But thank you for being an awesome audience. Uh, look, you're, you can get tickets for your show. Literally, Broadway.com has tickets for your show right now. Soldiers Play, you can do that. Um, tonight, Season 2 kicks off WGN America. I wrote down the time for you right here. At 10 p.m. Eastern Time, 9 p.m. Central, WGN America Carter Season 2 is back. Anything else you want to tell everyone before you get out of here? No, I love coming here, man. It's just such a fun, it's such a fun long-form interview. It's I'm really tell cool. You, I sincerely love having you here, and it yeah. is always so much fun when you come through, and it is an absolute treat. Thank you for making time to come hang out with us today. Uh, everybody join me in thanking the great Jerry O'Connell right here. Come on. Does yes. it get any better? Yes.